Welcome back to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Charlotte Brown, and on today's show, we've been talking all about the Urban Abbey, all the great stuff that they're doing down mm -hmm. there. And uh, I'd love to get into some of the programs that you're running there. I know a few times throughout the segments, we talked about Thrive. Maybe yes. we'll start there. Okay, yes, Thrive is a, I would call it a recovery-oriented learning environment. And if you think about a self-help environment, I like to call it that because the initials are she. It's a self-help environment for women who are in recovery from pretty much complexity and chronicity in drug addiction, uh, correlated often to mental health, correlated sometimes to brain trauma, correlated occasionally to criminality. So how can we create a setting that would have uh, long-term uh, life transformation, not simply recovery from addiction, but how could we see a life renewed, reinstituted? And so that's really what Thrive's about. And so it's the opportunity for moms with their children and their infants to become situated in a housing environment that's therapeutic. Uh, they can be there for a year and a half, and then we follow up with them for three years. And this addresses everything from parenting, uh, addiction recovery, education, um, how are they doing with their social base? Um, and therapeutic housing is usually about a month or two, so we have different things where you go in and get treatment. But it's been proven that treatment for a month uh, usually is 97% ineffective. Mm -hmm. So what you need is you need a treatment model that can be long-term and where you can have that relational interaction that will move people and bring them up from where they are to where they would like to be. It's self-directed learning plans. And uh, so right now we have five women uh, two are pregnant and three have little ones with them and uh, some have been with us for seven months at this point some are as uh, new as a month and uh, so it's been great the city of Thunder Bay has been very helpful we had a fire back mm -hmm. in April city of Thunder Bay was so generous and uh, took care of our needs for that because we didn't own the home so there was no insurance attached to it um, and then recently the 247 challenge, which you covered, Sharla. And we were trying to do uh, 247,000, which was the dream, but we actually got our dream in a sense because it'll be about $59,000. That you raised on them, which is incredible. Yeah, incredible. 11 days. Right, so if anybody didn't see that interview, let's talk a little bit about that. So um, the program isn't ran at the Abbey. No. You had a separate location, which then had burnt down. Yes. So then you were trying to raise the funds to, to purchase a new home yes. uh, to do that. So um, you actually did 247 Challenge, which was basically an 11 day fast that the, that the staff did, which mm -hmm. that's absolutely incredible, you know, mm -hmm. to, I can't imagine going one day without eating know, 11 right. days. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, kind of what the goal is, because you're still fundraising for that project, I'm guessing. Are you able to get the home or where's mm -hmm. things at with that? Yes, so we're absolutely able to get the home nice. because we have somebody who's willing to guarantee our mortgage. Great. Right now we're in a situation where the home that we were going to get is no longer available. Mm. So we have to move the girls in 25 days and we are on our house hunting um, extravaganza right now. Right. Um, but by October 1st, they'll be in a new home and we do have the funding that we're going to need. We just need to find the right house now. Absolutely, and what, what are the things that you're really looking for in a home? So in case somebody's looking and knows something that's out there or whatever, oh, that, yeah. uh, what are the key things that you're looking for? Key things are five bedrooms with room for a mother and child in each room. Mm -hmm. uh, we also need a play space. Uh, we need an, a neighborhood where folks are going to be excited about this uh, household moving in. Mm -hmm. And we also need a space that's going to provide room uh, for moms to be able to do some programming um, during the day. So it's a unique house, mm -hmm. but I know that we're going to find it and I am not in doubt. Oh yeah, there's there's mm -hmm. lots of big, uh, big homes in, in Thunder Bay. So yeah. I'm sure again, it'll be all about that divine timing and the right yes. place will, will show up for sure. Yeah. Um, right. Other programs that uh, you run through the Abbey that you want to chit chat about? I will do Dementia Cafe and then sure. if you want to do the other one. So sure. we are partnering with Lakehead University and the Center for Education uh, and Research on Aging and Health and the Alzheimer's Society to do something called a Dementia Cafe, a place to belong. Mm. And that begins February 2018. And it's a wonderful program imagined by Dr. Uh, Elaine Wiersma and uh, I'm going to be accompanying her on this journey where I I believe we have over 2,400 individuals who are diagnosed with dementia and their care partners, but just 2,400 individuals 
in the city of Thunder Bay who have this diagnosis, which makes it sometimes difficult for them to be in public spaces to enjoy, say, a cafe, mm -hmm. to enjoy a meal out. And so once our cafe, which Scotland's going to speak about, is completed, um, every Sunday afternoon, they're going to have a couple of hours that are just dedicated to them and their care partners to come in and just be naturalized in a normal setting where they can actually enjoy something that they would have just normally done throughout their life. So uh, it's going to be a wonderful project and I'm really excited about doing it. Beautiful. Love it. Mm -hmm. so tell me about the cafe, Scotland. Oh, yes. Okay. So we are um, converting in the middle of converting the former uh, ladies tea parlor uh, in the urban abbey into a high-end cafe and so we have uh, ordered in and finally got our made in Italy espresso machine mm. we have ordered um, a reversible dough sheeter so that Angela our chef can make uh, in-house croissants and specialty pastries Beautiful. and baking and uh, we're also going to be having a melted chocolate um, on tap machine where you can get light or dark chocolate poured into your little steamer of milk when you get your drinks made so that you can actually have um, like melted hot chocolates and nice. mochas and those kinds of things. What's the name of this cafe, Scott? Yeah, so it's called The Habit. <laughs> oh. Uh, and there's a little play on words. <laughs> a little bit. Little bit. Because yeah. uh, monks and nuns wear habits. That's yes. what their long robes are called. And yes. then obviously everybody else is aware of Drinking a coffee habit. Drinking coffee's a habit. habit. That's yes. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hours will be open early and open late as well. And so that will catch the theater crowd who are mm -hmm. going to Magnus and are looking for that place to go afterwards. It's also catching law students just up the street from us who are looking for a place to study and a place for quiet. Uh, but then during the day, um, we're also creating a two-story children's play center. Um, and that will take an, a couple months to complete, shortly after the cafe is up and running. And what that is, is a space where parents can come, um, especially during the winter months where sometimes people feel like uh, they might be a little shut in or secluded. Um, and they can come for free, drop their children off, and again, it's something that the Abbey would offer for free. And it's almost like an mm. IKEA model where you could come drop your children off for two or three hours, uh, go to the cafe, or go to the artist studio, or, or even go shopping to other businesses downtown because um, the Abbey loves all of our local businesses and want to keep people just able to engage in our vibrant downtown in Port Arthur. So. That's awesome. Um, that's mm -hmm. also, so those two things are fairly exciting that are coming up. Uh, the cafe should be launching in the next month, month and a half, something like that. So okay. Yes. And it's important to point out to Car uh, Charlotte that that cafe is going to be running to underwrite all of the rest of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, because we do not uh, seek city or provincial donation or grants uh, because we know there's already many needy agencies. So it's personal donation and the cafe yeah. will actually be our funding source. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. we're out of time, but before we yeah. wrap up, if people want to get involved, if they want to volunteer and help, mm -hmm. if they want to donate and support the Abbey and all the amazing yeah. work that you're doing, what's the best way for people to do that? Give uh, us a call. Give us a call. Yes. Okay. Or what are you going to suggest? Or Scott? go to our website, urbanabbey.ca, mm -hmm. or visit our Facebook page, which you can look up Urban Abbey on Facebook and we'll be there as well. And even more significantly, drop by. We're yes. there seven days a week. We're always open and I love to give tours. There's other people who also <laughs> love to give tours and yeah. uh, come for a free meal as well, 12.30 or 5.30 any, any day and we'll welcome you in. So. That's mm -hmm. fabulous. Well, I want to thank you, Scotland and Kimberly, for being on the show today, enlightening us all about what Urban Abbey is and what they do here in the city. You're doing mm -hmm. amazing work, and mm -hmm. uh, we're Thanks. really blessed to have you here in the city. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Mm -hmm. Be sure to watch next week with more on In Your Neighborhood.